Claiborne was the last guy to go first round. I think. I don't know if he went first round, but they have a bunch of guys. They have a history of excellent D line, but so we're ready. Uh, I think we're prepared for them. Corey, the, yeah, offen the offensive line seems to be, uh, or it is, the strength of this team. And what what has been the catalyst for your guys' growth together? And, and how do you assess the way you guys have performed so far through six games? The best thing about our room, I think, is that um, there's no real, you know, they always talk about, uh, you know, Jack's a leader, I'm a leader because I'm the center, you know, Norrell is, there's, and Marcus, there's no real leaders in the room. There's just a culture that we all abide to. There's nobody in the room that, if they're, you know, going soft, there's nobody, there's no soft guy in the room. There's no guys who, who are defiant is the best way I could put it. Um, it's just a culture that we all abide to because we all know, you know, we're all big dudes, we're all, you know, big uglies or whatever you want to say it, however you want to say it. But the the culture that we've all, and it's not just myself, Jack, Noel, and Marcus, and Reed last year. We didn't, it wasn't just us. It, it's from the bottom up. Guys like Ben St. John, Eric Kramer, those guys, I mean, Ben St. John does, I know you guys probably don't know who that is, but he's, he's he, I mean, he does 30 reps on a bench press, 225. So, I mean, when you're, I'm not trying not to demean Ben at all, but he's he's probably at the, the bottom end of our, in terms of depth chart. When your last guy is doing 30 reps on the bench press and giving his all every single day, then that tells you a little something about your unit. And, you know, Ben is not like, at any other school, he wouldn't be the last guy. So, I mean, it's just a testament to Coach Warner, to all of us, our culture. You went to a little more high school. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. All right. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> as far as going up against Iowa, I don't know if you know that they haven't allowed a, a rushing touchdown this yeah. season. Oh, we know that. So, so you know that. So when you go up against a team like that, I mean, is there a point of pride on the line that says we want to get that first one? Definitely. Um, we definitely want to get that first one. Uh, and again, the reason, probably the reason why they, they haven't is because of their defensive line. They're, they're, they're good. They're stout. They're tough defensive line. We've prepared for them. We, we know that. We've, took, we've taken this week very seriously as, in terms of in our room, in our unit. But uh, it's definitely a point of pride that we want to get that first touchdown. First first I'm, I imagine you're a team that wants to keep it, you know, a fairly low scoring game. How important do you think it is for your offense to kind of dictate the tempo and how the game starts out in terms of scoring? It's extremely important. Um, <clears throat> clock management is always huge, no matter whose offense you're talking about. Um, I think we've got to score. I think we got to score fast. We got to score right off the ball, or right off the bat, and then after that, we got to manage the clock by running the football. And we got to take up time. We got to eat up time. Sometimes you, we'll we'll score so fast, you notice we, we get those quick touchdowns, and then it, our defense has played four series within a matter of two minutes, you know. And uh, so I think that we're going to have to again. With the, goes back to the rushing touchdown. We're going to have to play an extremely good. Um, good game in terms of rushing the football, and our, our tempo is definitely going to dictate that. You guys have come off two big wins. People are looking at the schedule saying, okay, those two games, Wisconsin and Western, are two toughest games. Now you've got a bunch of non-ranked teams. Mm. What do you guys do to make sure that you don't get overcome, and that you don't look, old, look past anybody? The, I think the best thing that we do is just look for – it, it's really, I know it seems kind of, you know, everybody dogs the Big Ten about not having a bunch of ranked teams and, you know, the SEC this and Pac-12, but honest to God, I mean, <clears throat> you look at the history of Iowa and just to name a couple other teams, Penn State, Purdue, I mean, those guys, from an offensive line standpoint, those guys have had some extremely good defensive linemen and extremely good defensive players, and the weeks that we have taken off, those are the weeks that we've gotten beat, and the weeks that we've treated those teams as what the AP treats them as and what the what the rest of the country treats them as is non-ranked blow-off opponents. Those are the weeks that we get beat. And so it's just we've, you know, kind of learned from history. And we're not taking this week lightly, and we aren't going to take the next uh, however many weeks, seven weeks we got left lightly. Why do conference games foster those kind of games, do you think? <laughs> like, I mean, those kind of matchups where it does become a struggle when it doesn't look like it would be on paper. Okay, I mean – you got the top teams at the top of the conference, teams at the bottom of the conference. And, again, you know, people dog the Big Ten. You can say whatever uh, <clears throat> about our speed and about whatever. Every D-line in the Big Ten is a pretty good defensive line, and I think they can play anywhere in the country, and especially the past two teams that we've gone up against Northwestern and Wisconsin. And, I mean, we just <laughs> – they. Uh, but, anyways, yeah, rushing the football has always been a thing – 
what do you want to call it, a thing of the Big Ten. Yeah. You know? so, well, that, with that said, these guys questions. haven't given up a rushing touchdown. Yeah. I'm sure that's been brought up in y'all's meetings. Oh, yeah. I'm sure. Uh, how has it been that. brought up, and is it an incentive this week? Yeah, I mean, coaches don't need to say too much. They just put a piece of paper on their desk and say, you know, they haven't allowed a rushing touchdown. And uh, we kind of get it. That's like That was kind of astounding. I, I couldn't believe that when I mm -hmm. first heard that. And, you know, they have, they've played people. You know, they've gotten, they've gotten beat. And, uh, you know, it's kind of amazing that they have having a lot of rushing touchdowns. It's definitely an incentive for us as an offensive line. And coming off of a big game in Northwestern where we won the game, uh, ourselves and Carlos, by running the football. And so it's definitely an incentive for us. Carlos says he's back now. Or he has got a smile on his face. And yeah. that. When did you notice that? Was it just after the after the Northwestern game? Did it take, yeah. take till then? When he went beast mode in the Northwestern game. <laughs> and the guys were just bouncing off of him. One of the guys in Northwestern, like, couldn't tackle him. He just kept bouncing off of him. It was kind of... It's kind of funny, but he, he uh, that's I thought it was a testament to, to Carlos that he's, you know, he's running the football like he knows to run the foot knows how to run the football. Thanks, Thanks man. Appreciate it. Thanks,